today we're going to look at two different methods to start crocheting in the round. These two techniques you'll need to master as you progress through crochet because every time you start a project that works in the round, so we're talking hats, granny squares, anything where you're going to be working continuously around rather than flipping your work. You're going to use one of these two methods. Here we have example number one. This is crocheting in the round starting with a magic ring. Now this is kind of like your ultimate goal. This is what you want to work up to, but you do have to start a foundation somewhere. I'm gonna say this is the harder of the two, but the magic ring is very doable, even for a beginner. Now option number two is to start crocheting in the round using a chain method as your foundation. This is what we're going to highlight first because again, I think it's that first step to the magic ring method, but don't worry, you'll get there. Both of these techniques get easier with a little bit of practice. Now the first important lesson here is to understand that either of these methods can be used with any size yarn and any hook that coordinates. I'm simply using a worsted weight yarn here. I have a five millimeter hook, but you can use any yarn or any hook that maybe your pattern calls for or whatever you have on hand if you're just practicing these techniques. So we're going to do the chain method first and I'm going to assume that this is the very first time you're starting in the round. Well, like all other crochet projects, we need to start with a slip knot. So I've just wrapped the working yarn around my, two, around my finger two times coming towards me and then I'm just going to simply pull the back layer over the front Pull the front up and over, allow that to fall, and pull tight. Now place that loop on your hook and pull on the working strand. That's going to fasten it up to your hook. And yes, there are a few different ways that you can do a slip knot. This is just the way that I learned, and I continue to use it because it works for me. Now when we're starting in the chain method of crocheting in the round, we need to start off with a chain. The specific number of chains may vary depending on the pattern that you're working with, but for my example, I'm going to use four chains. So to make a chain, if you're brand new to this, you'll just wrap the working yarn around your hook and pull it through the loop. So that's one chain, two, three, and four. Now the next thing we need to do is make the ring, right? We need to have the foundation for the center of our work and we're going to do that by locating the first chain that we made. So find your slip knot. That's usually an easy guide because you can see that little bump there. Well, the, the piece of work that's right next to that slip knot is your first chain. And looking at it from this direction, you can kind of see it looks like a V and you'll stick your hook into that chain. Now I'm just catching one of the loops of the chain. You can ca catch two if that's more comfortable for you. Then we're going to slip stitch. So grab the working yarn, pull it through the chain, and then pull it through the loop on your hook. Now we're left with something that honestly doesn't look like much. It's kind of just a big mess of yarn and we need to make sense of it before we can actually go on to crochet our first round. So what I'd like to do from here is allow it to sit in my hands like this. So I've got my working yarn and my loop coming from the top. And when you do that, grab the two sides of kind of this big ball of yarn here and then pull it apart. Now when I do that, do you see how it kind of looks like a pretzel, a pretzel shape? Well, the center of the ring is actually the bottom of those three little holes that we see. So if we're looking at this kind of like a face, it would be the mouth. So what I want to do is isolate that center so that I'm working all of my stitches in the same place. So I'll just stick my middle finger there in that bottom hole and just leave it there so I can hold it in place and I know where I need to work my next stitches. Now for those of you working directly along with your pattern, you want to follow the instructions step by step. As we're working the first round, it's going to be different from pattern to pattern, but just for an example, I'm going to be working with 
eight single crochet stitches. So we're going to assume that my round one says to make eight single crochet stitches. Again, if you're following along with your pattern, if it says to chain three and double crochet nine more times, then that's what you should do. So for my example, I'm going to chain one because I'm working with single crochets. I'm just going to do that. And to make my life a little bit easier, I'm not counting that chain as a stitch. So I'm just basically going to ignore it. It's just a height differentiator to get me to the proper height to work my single crochet stitches. So now that we have the center of our ring isolated, we actually know where it is, I'm just going to stick my hook into the middle of the ring and then make my single crochet. Again, if you're doing doubles, half doubles, whatever your pattern says, you'll follow along directly with that. Do that once again, single crochet. And that's really all there is to it, to this first round, it's so simple. But there is one other thing I wanted to point out. As a beginner, sometimes we don't know what to do with these tails, and so we'll often just leave them there, we'll work around. But there is another goal that I would like for you to work towards, and that's working over this tail. That way you don't have to weave it in at the end and it'll save yourself a little bit of time. So to do that, I like to kind of use these two fingers back here and hold it into place so that it's laying over top of the chain. Then when I insert my hook into the middle of the ring, I've caught the chain. So that's basically the side of the ring. And then I'm just gonna make sure that that tail is laying over top of that as well when I work my stitch. And when you do that, it's going to trap that end underneath your stitch and you can pretty much forget about it at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and finish my eight single crochets. We'll pick up at the end of the round so you can see what to do next. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and finished making my eight single crochets that is all I'm going to do for round number one for this little example. And what I need to do to finish things off is I have to join. In some cases, your pattern will tell you not to join and to continue working in a spiral. And if that were the case, what you would do is find your first stitch. So I can see this is my first single crochet. I've got the V right here up at the top. I would just continue working in that stitch. So if my pattern had me working in single crochets, I would just go ahead and single crochet in that stitch, mark it with a stitch marker so that I know that that is now my first stitch of the next round, and then you could move on. But a lot of patterns will tell you to join with a slip stitch, and sometimes it can be to the third chain, the second chain, the first chain. That is if your starting chain counts as a stitch, but in my case, in my example, especially when I'm working with single crochet stitches, I don't like to use that chain one as a stitch because it's just harder to see to work into at the end. And this really is, you can tell from, from looking at this that that chain one is pretty hidden. So when you need to join with a slip stitch to your first stitch, all you're going to do is insert your hook into that stitch Then grab your working yarn, pull it through the stitch, and pull it through the loop on your hook. Now one of the characteristics to crocheting in the round, starting off with a chain method, is that you have a hole. Now if you're working with a granny square, sometimes this is part of the pattern and that's great, but if you're working with a hat, for example, maybe you don't want to have a hole in the top of your hat. So in that case, I'm actually going to fasten off. Now, if your pattern tells you to keep going, by all means, don't fasten off here. But I'm going to do so just to make things a little simple because I want to show you how to fix this little circle. So I did work over my tail as much as I could until I got to the end of the round. But I do have some left over and what I want to do is take a darning needle and thread that middle tail on the darning needle. So then what you want to do is follow your round of stitches with your darning needle. So working under a couple at a time, whatever's comfortable.
Then once you've made it all the way around, well, first of all, you can already see that hole has started to close up a little bit, but we can do, we can, we can close it up even more. To do that, all you need to do is pull on this tail. And I'm actually gonna have to cover it up kind of with my thumb so I can really get the full motion here. But as you pull on that tail, you're sort of working a drawstring and that's gonna close up that opening. Then if you have enough tail, you can continue to weave it in a little bit more so it's nice and secure. And then you don't have a little hole in the middle of your hat. Now moving on to option number two, the magic ring. We're going to start off completely different than we did with the chain method. We, we don't wanna start with a slip knot and this really is one exception to that rule. The first thing we need to do is gather up our two fingers, so my pointer and my middle finger, and I'm going to take the working yarn and wrap it around those two fingers two times coming towards me. So kind of like I'm setting up for a slip knot, only I'm not actually going to create a knot. Now the other thing you'll notice is what I'm doing with the working yarn. So here is what it looks like on the front side. I'm securing, this is my working yarn strand right here. I'm pinching it with my pinky back there, keeping some tension on it. And then of course, this is my tail. I'm going to secure that with my thumb. Now, if, if it's a little bit unnatural to do your thumb and your middle finger, you can also do your thumb and your ring finger, whatever works for you. The main goal here is that when you flip over your work, you wanna have some tension on both of these strands. Now, what you'll need to do is take your hook and just slide it along the middle of your two fingers. And then we want to grab this back loop and pull it under this front one. Now I often have to kind of turn my hook and swivel it around to make that happen. Then we have to access our working yarn. So again, my working yarn is coming out the back side here. I'm just going to readjust. So I'm holding on to the tail now with these two fingers while I grab the working yarn and make a chain. Now that act just secures your magic ring. Let's say you're working with double crochet stitches. Your pattern would likely say something to the effect of chain three because chain three is the height of a double crochet. But for my example, we're working with single crochets. So I'm just going to make one chain. So I'm gonna wrap the yarn, pull it through, and then I have my first chain for my magic ring. So this is what it all looks like at this point. And honestly, it's super awkward to hold on to your working yarn with these two fingers in the back. So what I do is grab my work just like this, pinch it off so I can slide those two fingers out. Now you want to make sure that your tail here is staying in position. That is the most important part of the magic ring because that is what makes it, makes it functional. So I can grab up my working yarn how I normally do and then reset myself. I'm gonna take these two fingers now in the back and put them in the middle of that magic ring. Again, making sure that my tail is laying right over it. And then we're going to use this as the foundation to work our stitches. So before we were using that chain, right? Well, in this case, we're going to work around, we've got two loops here or two strands that we're going to work over. So again, I'm gonna do eight single crochets just to keep things consistent. And I'm just going to work it around the ring. And as you progress, you'll probably need to turn it just a little bit so that it's in position. And you'll work however many stitches your pattern tells you. Now, when you're working with a magic ring starting method, a lot of times patterns will just say magic ring with eight single crochet. That would be the case that I'm working on now. And it kind of assumes that you know what to do. Alternatively, it might say something like do a magic ring with 12 double crochet. And in that case, you would basically do the same thing. So what do we have here? We have one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. So I have my eight single crochets and this is now what my magic ring looks like. It's very sensitive at this point. You don't wanna just set it down because we need to really fasten things up to secure it so we don't have to just redo what we just did. So what you'll need to do is grab your tail and then just steady that last stitch with these two fingers here in the back. So I'm, I'm pulling towards the back, but I'm also holding it in the front. And I'm pulling on that tail, and as I do, it's going to fasten it up. And this is where the magic part happens. So you can pull that nice and tight. You can completely close up that hole in the middle, and that's really the allure and the beauty of the magic ring. And at this point, you would be ready to either join the round or start on the second round. If your pattern tells you to, to continue working in spiral or it tells you not to join, then that's of course you would just find your first stitch, which for me is right here, and continue on with round two. But if your pattern does tell you to join with the slip stitch to, we'll say the first stitch, the third chain, second chain, whatever it may be, you're always going to join with a slip stitch. So I'm going to join with a slip stitch to my first single crochet. And this is the same now as the chain method. And that's all there is to the magic ring. I also wanted to let you know about a resource, a free resource that I have available on my website. And it's basically everything you need to know after this point. It's called the ultimate guide to crocheting in the round. You can find that on my website completely for free. You can see it right here on your screen. 